Hello and welcome back to another week of Sambo iRacing. It's week 10, season 1, 2024. We are in the form of the B at Okiyama International Circuit for their full course layout. So, good news. This is one of the better tracks that we have on the uh, schedule this season. It has got these nice uh, technical areas, but it's also got a big long straight, which is a welcome relief after the uh, joy that we've had trying to pass people at Sabuka um, for the last seven days. If you are new to the channel, what to explain? Right, what we're going to do is we're going to jump in the cockpit and I'm going to take you through each corner. I'm going to slow it down and show you my braking markers and uh, throttle inputs, braking inputs. And then I'm going to play it at full speed from the chase cam so that you can see it a little bit better. And then back in the uh, cockpit with the driving line on so that you can see where my braking points are in relation to that if you do use the driving line. Um, and as always, yeah, if you'd like to like and subscribe, it does help me get in front of more people and it helps YouTube's algorithm put me in front of more people on a weekly basis. So my channel is growing nicely. I'm up to 800 and something uh, subscribers. I can't believe that. Um, when I first started and I thought I was lucky to get 10. Um, but yes, I very much appreciate you guys taking the time to actually sit down and watch my laps. So thanks very much and I'll see you in the cockpit. Okay, so let's start the first lap. Obviously, we're over on the left-hand side, we're in fourth gear, and the uh, first braking marker is really, really straightforward here for T1. If you remember before, you see that cone on the right-hand side. We've actually drawn a nice line all the way across the track here, and that white line is my braking marker. So when I get to it, I come off the throttle, and I'm not giving it a massive amount of braking here for turn one, only up to about 45%, and I'm trailing that off, and notice here with the current track conditions as taken from the schedule um, I've actually found it a little bit uh, better for me personally this week in doing these laps to actually keep a bit of maintenance thrust on in a few of these corners so um, I go down trail it off down to the apex here and then build back up third gear your car will drift out to the left hand side get it back across to the right hand side and now what we're looking for is the turn in marker is where this grass ends and there's this muddy patch on the right hand side that's when i'm going to start moving over towards the uh, heading towards the apex and once i get about mid track i'm going to lift from the throttle down to about 25 percent very briefly and then build back up looking to get my wheels overlapping on the curbing here and now I'm fully back on the throttle nice and early uh, nice early apex keep it in third gear you'll come out over to the right hand side here where I am is fine do not go in the gravel it never used to be a problem but now it will really slow you down and then because we're going slightly uphill here I wait until about 135 kilometers an hour before I'm changing up into fourth normally it'd be a couple of kilometers an hour uh, sooner than that. Now you're trying to keep your car as straight as possible, make the track as short as possible, and what we're looking for on the left hand side here as we come up to actual curve turn four is the 50 meter marker or yard marker, whatever it is, it's a 50 marker. Once we get there, we're going to break relatively hard, about two thirds, and we're going to trail it off. And again, I'm just coming off the throttle. Um, I'm leaving a little bit of maintenance on there. It's probably not the most efficient way of doing it, but the reason why is it's quite a slippy corner, this, and by keeping some maintenance throttle on, it just means your back end's a little bit more planted. And what I'm looking to do is drop it down into third gear, and as soon as I drop it down into third gear, I'm fully back on the throttle nice and early. So as you can see here, I haven't even made it to the apex yet, and I'm already up to 100% throttle. Now, in previous years, what I've done is I've tried to hug it as tight around to the right-hand side as possible. It does make it shorter. But what I found as well is you do often scrub your front tyres there. You do um, understeer out a bit. So what I'm going to try and do and show you here is fully back on the throttle. It, I am allowing my car to move out towards the centre. And I'm making sure that I've got the momentum going with me before I come back over to the right-hand side. To, uh, cut the corner here as best as possible. This was my fastest lap of the dozen or so that I did. And the track is about four degrees warmer than it was last season when we were here. Right, as we come up to the hairpin, turn five, very tricky little turn. And again, the 50 yard marker, 50 meter marker on the left hand side. 
Someone let me know in the comments if it's meters or yards. It's okay, armor, so it's going to be meters. Okay, I'll shut up. Um, right, so once I get to that, I'm going to be breaking really quite hard. The hardest that we're going to break here. I've got my brake balance knocked four uh, clicks back towards the rear from baseline. So it does make my car that little bit more tail happy. People always ask me in the comments what my brake balance is. Um, but you do get people like Johnny Lutzu, the king of the V, the best record in the V that anyone's ever had. He just keeps his at stock every single race. Um, but yes, I'm breaking in a straight line here. Um, and as I start heading towards the apex, trailing it off. Now, I recommend for just about everybody that's watching this, just drop it to third gear here and then build back up. But what I noticed is with the new scan track at Okiyama, over on the right hand side here, the uh, curving used to be no problem at all, the rumble strip. However, I find that it, it, it's really kind of vicious um, this season um, with the new layout. So I actually found that it was quicker for me, not just dropping it down to third, but if you see, I drop it down to second as well, just because my car's um, had the roughing up that it's just had, as you can see there on the rumble strip. You'll see a lot easier when I play it at full speed. If I drop it down to second, and it just gives me that extra kick of getting out of the corner. And then I'm up to third, and then what you're wanting to do is get over on the right-hand side. You'd still be in third even if you hadn't dropped it to second. Uh, and once I'm over on the right-hand side, I'm going to move and sort of try and head back to go over this curb. I'm going to drop the throttle just with a nice lift up to about 10%, or down to about 10%, and then trying to get back on the throttle at the apex. You're wanting to get over on the right-hand side here to open up the next corner, turn 7. And if you go as far as I am, you're going to be fine. That isn't an off-track where I am, so long as your left tyres are remaining on the uh, rumble strip. So again, I'm doing a lift just so that I can get the rear rotation. I'm taking a ton of curving here, and I'm fully back on the throttle. And I can come out. And now for a very tricky turn, Redman Corner. You'll always hear your crew chief telling you that someone's had a spin at Redman Corner. So what we're looking for is quite a tricky one, this. So it's basically a couple of car lengths before the Marshall uh, point, as you can see where I am now. Um, what I'm doing is getting on the brakes, up to about 80%. I'm trailing it off nice and easy. I'm keeping some maintenance throttle on in third gear. And I'm wanting to get on the throttle nice and early, as you can see I am now. So I've taken uh, a nice entry. Get over to the left-hand side as quick as possible. And then, as we start making the uh, turn... Uh, in here into Hobbs, I'm just giving it a little bit of maintenance throttle and I've just tapped the uh, brakes just to try and get some extra weight over my uh, front tyres so that I can make this corner and now I'm fully back on the throttle. Let the car drift down. Now for Mike Knight corner, so I used to only ever sort of go over the um, the rumble strip here. You couldn't cut it any more than that because if you got it slightly wrong, it used to bounce your car up. However, now they've sort of calmed this uh, curbing down a little bit, so you can take as much as I have there. If you do sort of stray over to that yellow line, you are going to get an off-track and it will ruin your lap. And then up to the final corner. So once the um, green uh, curbing on the left-hand side is finished, I'm just going to give it a little tap of brake, uh, just a little touch up to about 30%, keeping some maintenance throttle on, and again, nice early apex, fully back on the throttle. And we go across the line in a one... What is it? A uh, 149.873. Just pull up, have a sandwich, and watch the rest of the qualifying. Right. I'll see you for the chase cam. Okie dokie, now let's run it through at full speed. So over on the left hand side, looking for the cone and the line across the track. Little brake, trail it off, third gear, get on. If you get that right, you'll feel this perfect slide. Whereas you transition from oversteer to understeer, it's beautiful. Little lift to go through two. Flat out through three, the Moss S, 50 yard marker, two thirds braking, 
get on the throttle nice and early, try not to scrub your speed, get back over to the right hand side to make the track short. Up to fourth gear, this is where you'll see people making moves this week, probably me and myself as well. Hard braking, you just drop it down to third here, I drop it down to second. If you do drop it down to second, then make sure you're not dropping it to second and you really are ready to go back on the throttle, otherwise you'll just lock up the rears and spin. I could have taken more curve on my left hand side there. And more on the right hand side there. Still looks a tiny lap. Yeah, no, I didn't quite apex that. Please watch my videos. I'll do better next time. But this should be a fast lap, by the way. Right, one last time in the cockpit with the driving line on. Slippy little corner, this first one. The importance of getting on the throttle early, round two, is, uh, is great. I was reading on Reddit the other day, people talking about the V and talking about how downshifting is so dangerous in the V. Um, and it's only dangerous in the V if you're downshifting early to get engine braking. So anyone that's been in a Formula One car or anything like that on those console -y games that we get, you can just you know, downshift all the way through, nothing's gonna happen. This being a, a proper mechanical car, you only want to downshift once the revs are in the right range. So you either need to be blipping or you only downshift when you're ready to go back on the throttle. I'm sure I've said that a thousand times. Uh, but there might be new people to the channel that haven't heard it. And around the final corner. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, the uh, Formula Ford guide will be out in 24 hours from when this one came out try and get a last to first challenge race uh, out on Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay, thanks very much for watching. I've been Sambo Racing.